Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, as you see, the topic is what uh, Robert Robert Jackson said about Prophet Muhammad or the founder of uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. What uh, this guy and this guy, famous names, you know. But before we start today, uh, the reason I decided to go and speak about this topic, I saw an article. And this article is uh, published by Islamic TV station. This is Al Arabiya TV, and this is a Saudi TV station. And here, this is a summary of the article, which is in their TV station anyway. Uh, and here you see the name of the one who wrote the article. His name is Ali Lamin. He's a Saudi. So this is not a Christian. We have nothing to do with it. In case Muslims want to make a fuzz and story about it. <clears throat> The article is speaking about a person, his name is Robert Jackson. Robert Jackson is a person who wrote stories, not stories, I mean tons of articles about an amazing person, an amazing religion, amazing organization. It's called the Muslim Brotherhood and the founder of it. And then, translate, shall we? Let us, before we translate, copy the link, and maybe we can post it for you. But I don't think we can post it because it's in Arabic, I have an Arabic words. But anyway, if we click translate to English, we will find the article saying that the person who is named Robert Jackson, who made a series of episodes speaking about uh, visiting Cairo in 1946. That he wanted to, so, to see the man who more than a half million people follow him at that time. And this is a big number at that time, remember, this is 1946. There's no internet at that time. So you have half million following you, that's a big deal. So the article here is speaking about this, this uh, those article and those episode glorifying this man, the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood, and how he learned from Allah and the Prophet to be decent, to be great, to be amazing. And then we find that the one who is writing this article, his name is Anwar al-Jundi. <laughs> Which means Robert, Robert Jackson is a Muslim Brotherhood guy from Egypt. He is not an American Robert Jackson. Robert Jackson is not exist. And here they are talking about how they get this story or those articles to be uh, busted. They are saying here that this person supposedly, who he call, they call him Robert Jackson, he uh, wrote articles for New York. This is the newspaper. And, uh, you know, uh, he spoke about... Uh, uh, how great and amazing the work of Allah through the Muslim Brotherhood. And then, you know, here they are saying, well, but this, you know, uh, supposedly, you know, when you lie, at least you should study some news about this newspaper. And the reason they mentioned that the newspaper, because this paper shut down, it's not exist no more. At that, at that time, at least, I don't know about now. So, because this newspaper was published in 1863 and it stopped publishing in 1926, but the person who is saying he published, he was publishing, you know, and the one who was talking about Muslim Brotherhood, he was publishing after Muslim Brotherhood was came to exist in 1928, but at that time the newspaper was gone. It's history. So here the, they start checking out, you know, those mistakes in the in, the, in those uh, news, and then they and you know it lead them at the end to find that the guy who wrote those article, 
is not a Christian, you know, Western writer, and he is not Western, and he has nothing to do with the West. He is a man, his name Anwar al Jundi, and he is a Muslim Brotherhood Sheikh. So, from a Sheikh terrorist to an American writer, and his name is Robert Jackson. Now, we will go to the front topic. I'm just giving you an idea how those people they are willing to make any kind of lies just to sponsor their propaganda. We heard the Muslims speaking about many big names speaking highly about the Prophet of Allah. How amazing he is, you know, the Prophet of Allah. And the funny, the Muslim they quote for us that uh, uh, George Bernard Shaw, he said, be aware of false knowledge. It is more dangerous than ignorance. Hmm. So George Bernard Shaw, he said that. Okay, I don't know if he said that, I'm not sure. But in the same time, they say to us, that George Bernard Shaw, he said amazing things about Muhammad. And now we will show you some. I have always healed or held the religion of Muhammad in high estimation because it is wonderfully. I mean, you can read it. I'm not going to read it. Now, and then you, you look down, you will find the quotation. The quotation is coming from a book. It's called The Genuine Islam, very number one. The Genuine Islam, value number one. Do we have any Muslim in the chat? Do we have any Muslim in the chat? Who is a Muslim in the chat? He can help us. I want you, my friend, to show me where we can find the book. It's called The Genuine Islam. Who want to help us? Who is a Muslim here? He can help us. Either you Muslims, you are fabricating lies with no shame and you have no dignity. Or this is true. Where we can find the book, it's called Genuine Islam, written by George Bernaccio. Remember, we have the name, I mean, we have the name of the book. We have the value number, even there's values of it. It's not only like one book, it's value number one, value number two, value number three. It's value number one, brother. This is what? This is value number one. And then number eight, and it's published in 1936. No, sorry, November 8th, I think. They mean here November 8th, the publication date. Any Muslim can show us the book. It's called The Genuine Islam. Where we can find this book? I mean, you Muslims only, you have, you, you, is that the same as the, you know, I mean, there's only one copy was in the hand of the Muslims and then the Christian, they burn all the rest of the copies. Okay, what is your copy? Do we have any Muslim? So what I'm trying to say to you, you cannot trust a Muslim saying anything about anyone. I'm sure after I die, they will say Christian Prince, he converted to Islam, he says Shahada, he was doing poo-poo in the bathroom, like, uh, uh, like uh, uh, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, and then he put his finger up to Allah, and he said Shahada, and he became a Muslim, Alhamdulillah. Do you know that the Christian Prince himself converted to Islam? Just wait. I mean, where is your dignity? Where is, and what, I mean, don't you have a shame? And then look, this is an article here written in front of us. And he, uh, I mean, those people, they, they, they have like uh, an art of fabrication. If you, read, if you read here, this is an article written by a Muslim. All right. Letter to Reverend Ensor Walters, 1933, as quoted in Bernard Nacho, Collected letters, 1926-1950. And then they say, I have always healed, or held, the religion of Muhammad highly, high estimation, estimation, because it is wonderfully, but hold, hold on. This is what was supposedly in the genuine Islam, value number one. 
so uh, Bernard Shaw, he say the same thing in all his writing, wherever he go, like copy paste, like even word by word. I thought this is in the genuine Islam book. We continue. Okay, Muslims, who is going to show me this quotation in the letter which is sent to Reverend Insor Walters? Who is the hero who want to show me this? That in page number 305, George Bernard Shaw, he said this. It is the only religion which appears to me to possess the assimility, I don't know how to read it, sorry. Assimility, assimilating, assimilating uh, capability to change in the face of existence which can make itself appeal to every age. Allahu Akbar. To every age, brother. In every age, you will love to beat women. In every age, you will love cutting head. I mean, this is the only religion appeal. Okay. And who said that? George Bernard Shaw. Muslims, where we can find this quotation? Uh, Hamoud, you see, you are the Muslim who made a quotation. Can you show me the book? Don't answer me with the stupid things, honestly, Hamoud. I have no time for stupidity. You are welcome to, to you know, to join us in the conversation. But if you have something to say, you have to. You made the quotation. Can you show me the book? It is you who is saying that your prophet he said that in his book, or this man, I mean, sorry, George Bernardo. He said these words about your prophet. And look how amazing this guy. He must be a Muslim then. To them, Muhammad was an antichrist. I have studied him, the wonderful man. In my opinion, far from being an antichrist, he must be called the savior of humanity. <laughs> so when you Muslims, you make a fraud. I mean, don't you go, don't you ask yourself, okay, those people, they are going to go and search and study and they will find that this is nothing but a scam. So I'm asking you now, who is a Muslim? He can give us the reference for what it, you see. We have the page number, my friend. We have the page number. You Muslim are quoting even the page number. You are quoting the name of the letters. The letter to Reverend Insor Walters, page number by by Dan Lawrence, page number three o five. Okay, can you show it to me? We have a brother who is an ex-Muslim from Morocco. He did search. He did a good search, actually. And, you know, you guys, you don't speak Arabic, the program in Arabic, sadly. But I will help you. This brother who is an ex-Muslim, he's a son of a sheikh from Morocco. He became a Christian, and now he is doing his best to bring people out of Islam. He is showing you that how Muslims they fabricated stories and he made a full study about what a great man they said about Muhammad. And you will not believe it what those great men they say about Muhammad. I will translate for you a little bit. The genuine Islam اعتقدت انه كتاب لبرنارد شو طلع انه مش كتاب لبرنارد شو ايه رايكم هي سين فيرست يو نو لايك وانا يو نو لايك اي سيرش اند اي ثوت ذس از ا بوك ريدي فور برنارد شو سو اي سيرش فور ات اند ذن اي فاوند اتس نوت اوكي طلع انه مجله اسلاميه ات تيرن تو بي اتس ا ماجازين اسلاميك ماجازين ذا فيرست وان هو بابليش ذس لاي از ان اسلاميك ماجازين مجلة إسلامية وممكن تبحثوا عنه في نيويورك بابليك لايبراري هي سين تو يو يو كان فايند ايفن دوس ريفرنس فور ذس اسلاميك ماجازين ان نيويورك بابليك لايبراري يو شو اون يور ريفرنس موجود في الارشيف او موجودة في الارشيف مجلة إسلامية كانت تصدر في ثلاثينات او في 1936 It used to be published this Islamic magazine I think it's in Singapore actually it says there Singapore in 1936 something. It's a magazine, Muslim magazine. Somebody fabricated a lie 
And that's it. George Bernard Shaw, he said that. صدر في سنغافورة إلى حد تسعة وثلاثين عن منظمة إسلامية اسمها International Union of Islamic Propaganda. <laughs> Even the organization name International Union of Islamic Propaganda. So this is the purpose of this organization to make propaganda false lies. And now everybody, if you go in the internet, you search Islam, George Bernard Shaw, everybody copying the same lie. One guy, he created a lie, the rest they follow. هي منظمة للبروباغندا الإسلامية أصلا. فعندما تطلب منهم المرجع يقولون لك جنون إسلام. وإيه جنون <laughs> When you ask them what is the reference, they say to you جنون إسلام. <laughs> You said, okay, where, where, is the, where is the reference for this? Where we can find this book? They said, Genuine Islam. Okay, where is Genuine Islam? <laughs> My argument, Hamoud, that your religion is sponsored by lies. If Islam is a good religion, you do not need to lie in order to make us believe that men, they say good things about Muhammad. No need to lie. من اسلام مجله اسلاميه للبروباغندا الاسلاميه وكانك سمعت برنارد شو يقتبسونه في قناه الناس ولما سالتهم ما هو مرجعكم من كلام برنارد شو قالوا لك قناه الرحمه هي از كوتين هي سين ذا مسلمز يو اس ذيم هو از ذا وان هو سيد دي سي وي هيرد ذس فروم ذس فروم لايك ذس تي في ستيشن اند هو از ذس تي في ستيشن از اسلاميك تي في ستيشن ان يو اسلاميك تي في ستيشن ذا سكند وان وير يو هيرد ذس دي كيب جوين انتل يو جو ان ذا اند يو فايند يور سيلف يو ار كوتين مسلمز ناو ام نوت جوين تو بلاي ذا هول ثينج ليت اس موف ا ليتل بيت وات وات ذا جريت مان ذي سيد اباوت اسلام ليسن كيرفولي عقد في اللاهوت في كل شيء هنشوف عظماء ماذا قالوا عن الاسلام وعن We will see great names in history what they say about Islam محمد اولهم سابدا به هو عالم الرياضيات باسكال باسكال the french scientist 1623 to 1662 what he said about Islam العالم الفرنسي الذي عاش من 1623 الى 1662 هو رياضي وفيزيائي ومخترع is a physician he is a mathematic scientist he is an inventor he is a you know big deal وواحد اللي اسس حساب الاحتمالات probability هو واحد من اللي اسسوا لحساب الاحتمالات في 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 الرياضيات وكلنا لما he established many methods of mathematics etc درسنا الفيزياء درسنا شيء اسمه قانون باسكال and when we study the, the physics we study something is called the law of pascal قانون باسكال في في السوائل انه about liquids ضغط في 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 السوائل يكون متساوي في كل الجهات آه الى اخره فقانون باسكال معروف في الفيزياء so this is very famous you know his uh, studies is very famous let us go what he said about muhammad لي بونسي لي بونسي او خواطر واحد من الكتب المؤثره لباسكال وقال فيها كل ما يجول في ذهني بالنسبه للاهوت بالنسبه للفلسفه من بين الاشياء اللي قالها هو باسكال ويجر اللي هو ريهان باسكال المعروف انه وكمان مبني على الاحتمالات لان الرجل از اكسبلين ناو اباوت وات ذس جاي هي ديد اي وونت جو تو ذا توبيك ليت اس سي اف وي كان سكيب We will we will know when he is in the topic when he put what Pascal he put in the screen. So he is giving an introduction for the scientist because many Muslims maybe they've never heard of him. He's a big shot. Uh, 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 Hamoud, just get lost. Are you better? Are you an inventor of mathematics person? What does this have to do with our topic, you donkey? Get out of here. Get out of here. You know I don't I don't have time for silly stupid people like you. Get out of here, you idiot. Are you better inventor in mathematics? This guy is a big scientist and he's a Christian, you idiot. Well, is your prophet is, a, is an inventor of science? Go and see the chapter of uh, chapter four about the women inheritance. You would die laughing. I challenge you to divide the inheritance of somebody he, he died. Are you, are you better in mathematics? Why? Somebody told you I am claiming to be a mathematics scientist. What, what does this have to do with 
the guy he is quoting for you what a great scientist he said about muhammad because you muslim you speak about great names say things about your prophet so what he's what Pascal he said about the faithy muhammad let us see <clears throat> yeah Uh, too bad you guys don't speak Arabic, so you know we are. Uh, so what this guy he said? I think now he will say. Yeah, yes, Pascal and Muhammad. Hmm. Muhammad he said. Uh, this Pascal he said. Muhammad he established his religion by killing his enemies, and the Messiah he established his by giving his followers to sacrifice their life for them. This is what Pascal he said. And here you see the, re the reference, which is real reference. You can go and check it out, Abdul. Not like genuine Islam. Thoughts in religion and philosophy, page number 126 for Pascal. Now I'm going to move forward and see another quotation. Okay. What else? Joseph Yonj. What Carl Joseph Young he said, I don't know who is this guy. Let us see what he said. This is a different guy. Hitler. <laughs> This man, this man, his name is Carl. You can read his name. Let me zoom in his name. And you can get the reference too for those who they are seeking reference to, you know, to be sure this is correct. Carl Gustav Jung and the name of the book, Symbolic Life, etc. And then you see the reference. He said that Muhammad, uh, look what he's saying. We don't know if Hitler, he was going to establish Islam, a new Islam, or who, or he, in fact, he is, you know, doing that. Because he is the same as Muhammad. Both of them, they are drunk with a filthy uh, beast. Filthy God beast. Bi'ilahin wahshi. So this is what this guy he said about Muhammad. Let us continue. I'm going just to forward. Those who will make the video later, you can cut it, please. Just to make it short, maybe you can make it like to get the, let us say, the cheese of it. I will move in here. Different person. Voltaire. I mean, who don't know Voltaire? Hmm? What Voltaire he said about Muhammad and Quran? Voltaire, he said, and here again, this is the reference for those who they are seeking reference. This is the reference. And our reference is not like yours, Abdul. It's real. He said, that Muhammad, he, uh, he trade after uh, making revolution by arm, with his uh, tribe by uh, making alliance with some bad people or let us say miserable people and he convinced them that he speak to the angel Jibreel and he was proud that he went to the sky and then he received partly this book which nobody understand which every page of it will make your hair like you know when uh, uh, you know like when you see something ugly you know you're here like you know stand up or something like that trying to translate the word and then he said and uh, and for the sake of this book which means Muhammad book or Quran he deliver his land or he delivered or his land delivered to him by iron which mean and, and, and fire which mean by war and he cut the hand the, the heads of the fathers he kidnapped the girls and he gave the choice for those who they are lost 
either to convert to Islam or die. Who is the one that said that? Voltaire. Voltaire. And this is the reference in the front of your eyes. When somebody says something, I don't know, like your hair stand up. Yeah, if you see something scary, supposed to your hair, because your skin will will go in alarm. You know. If you don't like uh, my explanation, give us your own. I'm sure you understand. Don't play like you you have no idea. So this is what Voltaire said. Let us see a different person. And we will go, by the way, we will not stop here. We will go until we arrive to what George Bernard Shaw, he said for real. Because George, George Bernard Shaw, he spoke about Islam. Dante. Dante. What Dante he said about Muhammad? Each time I see somebody, he have like a... a I don't know what he mean by it. Each time I see somebody, he split like two pieces from his shin all the way from the, the chin of, of, your, of your beard all the way to your anus. And his belly is out, coming from between his legs. And his heart is coming out. And uh, 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 and, and, and uh, uh, where the... Like, where... where uh, uh, where urine is stored inside the, the belly of a human being. Uh, and then I see how ugly it is. Right away, I imagine how I am ugly as Muhammad. Or let's say, my creation is disturbing as Muhammad. So he's describing the most evil thing about a human being. The second he see that, he remember right away, as if he is Muhammad. And this is again the reference, the divine comedy. Who is the one who is speaking Dante? The divine comedy. Let us continue. Because the program is long. Okay, now what George Bernacho he said. Shall we go to George Bernacho? We are trying to find, here we go. This is what George Bernard Shaw said for real. Islam is a different religion. It is not a tolerance religion, but aggressive. And it became, uh, uh, like let us say, as if he's saying, like the one who claim it is tolerance, it is just a lie or a, 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 a stupid talk, blah, blah, blah. Either you believe, let me highlight, either you believe on Allah or they are going to cut your neck from the side of somebody he, uh, who believe in it, which means a Muslim. And he will go to heaven for he sent you to hell. This is what George Bernard Shaw said about Islam. And this is the reference. But look, this is the same reference we found in the Islamic website, here. This is exactly the same reference in the Islamic website. Let me show you. Take a look. Do you see? But here Bernard Shaw, in the same reference, even the same page number. Guys, the same page number. Bernard Shaw, he said, Islam, amazing. I always held religion of Muhammad in high, like, this guy, he's crazy about Muhammad. This is what the Muslim, they said. In the same page, it is the only religion which appears to me to possess whatever and it's the only religion who can save the humanity, whatever. And Muhammad is not Antichrist, whatever. All of this in one page. I mean, actually, if you if you look at the quotation in one page, it's bigger than the page. If this is a quotation from the page, the quotation from the page is bigger than the page. <laughs> and then we go and we find that the, the same page 
It's saying the opposite about Muhammad. That anyone who believes that Islam is tolerance, he is a liar. Islam is very aggressive in tolerance religion. Either you believe in Allah, or they will cut your neck. The same exact page. Look with me. The same page number, 305. So the same guy, he said Islam is wonderful, Muhammad is amazing. And the same guy, where we can find the quotation you are showing us? And you know, the video is long, it's like one hour and, and a half. Keep going. Tons of people who say things about Muhammad, all of it, it's ugly, and all of them, they are very well known famous. You know, even there's a book, uh, uh, there's a book, uh, you know, remember the, there's a book, it's called The Most uh, uh, Effective uh, People, 100, The Top Affected People, uh, Affecting People, whatever it's called. Or let us say, I forgot the name. The most time they translate that book. And the Muslim translation about that book, that part about Muhammad, they said that the guy, he said, the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, is the most effective. This guy did not say peace upon him. He did not say poopoo -poo upon him. He did not use the word upon him. And they fabricate tons of things. And supposedly, this is the translation. The guy, he speak about Muhammad, that he is a war warrior. And he mentioned the name of Hitler too in his book. He mentioned Mussolini, he mentioned terrorists, he mentioned criminals, and he mentioned good ones. So when he mentioned Muhammad, he is the most influenced man, I think the word was influence. He's speaking about the influence of violence. In the translation, they spoke about him highly. When every person who is known in poetry, in knowledge, in science, speak very bad about Muhammad. And you know, let us say for the sake of argument, all those who they are famous, they spoke wrong about Muhammad. Or let us say the opposite, they spoke good about Muhammad. I don't care. Muhammad is evil. Who care? Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Do we have any Muslim here can prove me wrong that Muhammad is not evil? Who is a Muslim would like to do so? <coughs> Anyone? So all those things they say is a lie. And as you see, they fabricate writers. They fabricate even writers. They are not even exist. This is the religion of a fraud. Their prophet was a fraud. And they practice a fraud with no shame. Prove me wrong. The question will be, why somebody he believe in Muhammad that he's a great man anyway? I mean, who cares if George Bernacho said or he did not say what that would do for you? I will tell you what you do, because you used his propaganda in order to make Western believe that Islam is a great religion. You see, this guy he is quoting for you tons of famous people. They spoke very ugly about Muhammad, but that will not change anything. Muhammad is still ugly. They speak good or ugly. That is not the point. The point is you Muslims lying about your prophet. I will not, I would don't care what people say about Jesus. I'm not going to make a false quotation that somebody said that Jesus is wonderful. That is stupid, actually. I mean, how, how bad your prophet is to the point you fabricate good quotation about him. How bad he is. It's a clear sign that your prophet is evil. Otherwise, you will not need to fabricate 
lies and say things is not true. Yeah, and they say to you, Dr. Moore, do you know Dr. Moore? Dr. Moore, he says about the, the, the sperm, Dr. Moore, they invited him, they give him big check in Saudi Arabia. He did not even convert to Islam. Why Dr. Moore did not convert to Islam? Dr. Moore. And who is Dr. Moore? They told him that the Quran says that the sperm is like a leech. Oh, sorry, the egg is like a leech. But the Quran never said that. The Quran said the sperm, not an egg. So they gave him false translation, and the guy says, based on what I see, this is sound like science. That's all. People who have a true God, they will not do what the Muslims do. Only when you are following a fraud man, his name is Muhammad, you do that. Taqiyya. So, the funny here, that we were showing you an article written by Saudi Arabia. Hmm? About article written, written, many articles written by a person, his name, Robert Jackson. And then we find out that Robert Jackson is a sheikh and his real his real name is Anwar Jundi <laughs> you know in order to make to make it like you make you because supposedly do you remember the guy from uh, from uh, uh, Philippine who said to me I, I, I debated the real American a, a, a real American, a real, a true American. You are not the true American. You have an accent. You remember? This potato nation, they knew deep inside them that they have no base. And they knew that the stupid ones around them, they worship the white man. There's a white man worship in many culture. So if the white man, his name is Robert Jackson said that Muhammad or uh, Hassan al-Banna or those names are wonderful. That's amazing. Why they want to say that? Unless it's true. Why they want to say that? Why a Christian Western writer, he will say such a thing? It's just to convince themselves of the lie. So they created a lie and they published a lie for their own people too. And now people for a long time, they believe, yes, there's a guy, his name is Robert. If you go and search now in the Islamic website, especially the Muslim Brotherhood, you will find the name of this guy, Robert Jackson, is almost in every page. Robert Jackson said this, Robert Jackson says that, and Robert Jackson said, and then we find that Robert Jackson is the same guy who is running the organization. His name is Anwar Jundi. And what make it funny that the one who's exposing them is Muslim too, and they are Saudi. Tons of names are fabricated, they are not even exist. On Muslim Brotherhood Wikipedia website, there is a topic entitled Imam Hassan al-Banna in the eyes of the West. Mm -hmm. In the eyes of the West. By who? By the Quranic man, Robert Jackson. And then we find that Robert Jackson is a, is a terrorist. And he is an Arab. And he is a Muslim. And his name is Muhammad Ali Balbula. And we Jundi. Imam al-Banna in the eyes of the West. It's an article without a signature. It was placed in the head of the uh, 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 celebrated Western and Western. This remember, this is a translation by Google, you know, for the article. An important dialogue by Professor Hassan Al Banna with Mr. Spencer, the American War. Hmm. 
I mean, all those. So they fabricate interview, they fabricate article, they fabricate quotation, they fabricate, and the whole article here is showing you that this is all is a fraud. And who is the one who made the article? This is made by Muslims. And this is the Arabia TV for those who do not know. This is an official Saudi TV. And this is the guy who wrote the article, Ali Al Amin. So why Muslim they do that? What you really gain from your, you know, for, from those lies? Time will come and people will laugh at you and people will not trust you no more, will not believe you no more, even if you say the truth ever. Who is going to believe a Muslim quoting anything for us? And this is why I say always, never believe Islamic translation. Any translation you see made by Muslims, it's a fraud. Not only their article, even they are not decent to translate their Quran. If I take it right now, as an example, chapter 4, verse number 34. What the translation is saying? Read it. And I challenge any Muslim to tell me where we can, who can point the words in Arabic and match them with the word in English. Because as long as translation, well, the same word should be there in Arabic. Can we find them? No. How come? Why the English translation? Where it says next, where it says lightly, where it says first, where it says uh, strike uh, 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 as what? Uh, and beat them lightly. <laughs> <laughs> what is the purpose of adding the word lightly? Can any Muslim tell me? What are you trying to do to me? I mean, why? What? What do you want to say to me? Let's say I am an American person who don't speak Arabic. When you say lightly, what does that mean? Why you are adding the word lightly? And even you strip it, even you put it between two brackets, which means obviously it's not there. So why you put the word lightly? If Allah did not say the word lightly, why are you adding it? Are you, are you correcting Allah? Are you making it clear because Allah, he, did not, he could not make it clear? Because I'm trying to understand. Any Muslim can tell me what does that mean? And supposedly now you make it better, like light, we beat them lightly? Is that supposedly better? If you change the translation, this is Yusuf Ali, change the translator, you will find the word lightly became discouraged then. Just to change the translator. This is Yusuf Ali. Let us go to a different uh, liar. Yusuf Ali, where is that? Here we go. Let us go to this one. Big tal. Look, the word lightly disappear. It says here and discourage them. Where is the word lightly? Scourge them is lightly. Have you ever heard of the word scourge? You scourge somebody lightly? What happened? Somebody saying Santa Claus is a Christmas Satan. Okay, well, he's not coming to you. Get, you know, get lost. Say hi to mommy. Tell her Christian prince he saved me from Santa Claus. Stupid idiot. People are worried about Santa Claus who give gifts. They are not worried about a child Muhammad, child molester Muhammad and his criminals. Hmm. Any Muslim can tell us why even your everything everything in your cult is a fraud. Translation is a fraud. And even when we quote for you an authentic hadith, you say it is fraud. Even you, you yourself, when we show you something, you say it's a fraud. But it's written in your book. It's a fraud, brother. Your books, your prophet said so. It's a fraud. 
So you Muslims, you wrote lies about your prophet, yes, brother. So you Muslim, you lie about your prophet. To us, and you lied about your prophet to yourself? What site? What do you mean, what site? This website I'm using is called QuranWow.com, and obviously it's wow. This is a lot of wow. <clears throat> right? Even they call it wow. Wow.com. When you read the Quran, you say wow. For sure, the Quran is wow, like sperm coming from the backbone. Women have a sperm coming from the ribs. Uh, you know, hail is coming from mountains in heaven. Allah, He placed mountains on the top of the earth as if it's a sheet, so she would not move the Mrs. Earth. Uh, you know, I mean, this is a wow book. Any Muslim have anything to say to us? Who is a Muslim want to say something good for us about Islam? Who want to give us yeah? Who, who want to give us the genuine Islam? Forget about the book which is fabricated by you Muslims about George Bernard Shaw say genuine Islam because it's not exist. Shame on you. I mean, did even the liar who fabricated this lie think for a second? Okay, people would go and search. But let me tell you what happened. At that time, there's no internet. And this magazine is in Singapore. And those who speak English, I mean, they are limited in the sun area. And how they will know that George Bernard Shaw did not even write such a book? It's going to take a hundred years before they find out. Okay, no problem. It took us a hundred, hundred years. Until the internet came and then we reached to us that you, you lie, that your lie came to us. Hmm? Do we have any Muslim want to tell us about the genuine Islam? Any genuine Islam you want from the Quran, from the Hadith, something good. Anyone? No, we keep Jesus for Christmas and we don't forget about Santa. Santa was a good man, Santa is a real person, was a great Christian. And I wish that all of us, we can do what this guy did. You should be proud about Santa Claus. He was a real man. It's not a fiction. Stop being silly. Do we have any Muslim want to tell us something genuine about his prophet, which is make him good? Anyone? What is good about Muhammad? Not a single Muslim want to tell us something good? So all those videos we see in YouTube, they are nothing but the propaganda. The Muslim, they spend half a century of their life to prove to us that the Quran is a preserved. My friend, I don't want you to believe the Quran is a preserved. This is the most preserved, stupid book ever. Please preserve it. Actually, me, myself, like you see, yeah, I'm going to make, a, I will start soon making short videos for Yasser Kadi, just for comedy, you know, just for love. Honestly, just for love, because this guy is just a, is just a joke like the rest of them. But I am the last one who would like to try to prove Quran to be not preserved. It's not, it's not for my benefit. Because if you remember, I had many debates before with Muslims, and then the Muslims, they start saying, excuse, oh, the Quran which is sent by Allah is not this Quran. That's why the Quran have mistakes. You see, they, they found a way to escape. Now they get a new way. Oh, this is, the, this is not the genuine Quran. The Quran we have it today is false. So they escape. So don't give them escape. No, no, this is the genuine Quran. No, this is the true Quran. It's word by word, brother. Letter by letter. The dot is there, is not missing. Not even a single dot is missing. It's for my benefit. Because, because if you reach the point where all the Muslims agree that the Quran, which we have today, is not genuine, they will find a way to say, oh, okay, well, you are, see, you are talking about the Quran, which is not genuine, but the true Quran is good, but we lost it. <laughs> Right? 
So do we have any Muslim want to tell us something about the genuine Quran? Want to quote for us something from the genuine Quran? You know, and you know, uh, uh, Islam teaches us that Islam is a is an international religion. And when you ask them, what does that mean? They say Islam is for everybody. Okay, is that for monkeys too? They say yes. Monkeys are Muslims. You say to them, Abdul, are you sure? They say yes. And they practice Sharia Allah. During the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, I saw a she monkey surrounded by a number of monkeys. They were all stone in it. I mean, what do you want more? And this is Sahih Bukhari. And he continues saying, they were all stoning it because it had committed illegal sexual intercourse. And I too, I mean, look at this guy lie. This guy he is so good in lying. I too stoned, stoned it along with them. Like he heard the monkey saying, <laughs> Allahu Akbar in the, you know, in the monkey language. So he joined them. And this monkey, this filthy female monkey, she was a cheating her. If you have my book, actually, Sex and Allah, you will find the whole story because here it doesn't show the story. The story is that this monkey, female monkey, her husband, Mr. Chapanzi, was sleeping over her arm. And then she saw a handsome monkey from behind a tree. And he, <laughs> and you know, like he talked to her, you know, like he blinked his eye. Actually, it says there. And then she took her arm slowly from the under the head of her husband. Be watch, guys, when you sleep next to your wife, not don't to trust your wife putting her arm underneath of you. No, by handcuffs. She will do the same as what this look like. This is what the females do. I mean, monkeys, not monkeys. Even chickens they do that. You can trust them. So she took her arm slowly from under his head, and she went behind the tree, and they did boom boom. And then, alhamdulillah, she came back and then she put her hand under the, the head of the uh, chimpanzee. But Mr. Chimpanzee, he started sniffing. <laughs> this is why you men, you should sniff. I'm telling you, you better go back to the sniffing time. Sniff her. So he started sniffing his, his, uh, his, uh, his uh, filthy wife. She's beautiful, by the way. I mean, she have, she have really good features. We have to be honest here, you know. So... Uh, he started sniffing her and he sniffed a sperm, semen. So he starts screaming, Takbir Allahu Akbar, Takbir Allahu Akbar. And all the monkeys, they came from everywhere and they start looking for the. He said, My wife, my. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Translation. The wife is cheating, you know? And then, like, the monkey, they start, like, they publish a picture, she put, they put her in the tree. Now, this is my edition, not the story. <laughs> because most of them, they will say, see, he's lying now. He's lying. The story doesn't say picture. It doesn't say wanted. Hello. He's lying. You know, they get me busted, supposedly. So they make a, a post uh, for her. Uh, and she had a picture with lipstick, and she is wanted. And then, you know, they got her, uh, by, the, by the way, where is the guy who was sleeping with her? They, you got the female only? <laughs> I think the guy he was driving like you know an American car or something. How come you get only the girl? Where's the guy? So brother and sister, if this guy he go to the Philippines, he will think those Filipino monkeys are having illegal intercourse every day because they throw coconut at each other. <laughs> you know, monkeys, brother, look to I practice Sharia law. This is Islam. This is your religion. I mean, how stupid you are. Like the Muslim, they say to us, Sahih al-Bukhari, he is a big Imam. How stupid this Bukhari is to write even such a story, to accept such a story to be in the book. Be honest with you, Muslim. How stupid, like imagine, okay, you know what? I am a sheikh, big sheikh, big scholar, and I heard this story. How in the world I approve such a story to be in a book about Muhammad and about my religion? I and mean, what is the purpose of this one? Because they believe in it. It's true story. It's true. 
I assure you actually that every single female monkey these days, in the old days they used to be good by the way, because there's no TV stations and those things, you know, internet, Facebook and this garbage, you know. In the old days they was, they, 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 the monkeys were conservative. So this was a bad female monkey. Not like these days, you know, female monkeys, you go to the zoo, they are jumping all over the place. They are even wearing clothes. You, you can see their butt. No shame, you know. Stop this time. In the time of the Prophet, brother, they used to be very decent. Hmm. And this female here, she don't present the monkeys at, the, at that time. She don't present, she is just a bad monkey. You know, the rest of the female monkey, they were wearing hijab and wearing burqa and they pray to Allah. And they follow the Quran. Actually, I can show you a verse from the Quran. It says that even animals, they worship Allah and they preserve the book. Who want to challenge me? Who is a Muslim want to challenge me about that? Even Muhammad, he speak on the judgment day, Allah will judge between two goats. Two, two goats are fighting. Any Muhammadan? So you fabricate lies, George Bernard Shaw say this, George uh, Fasho says that, you know, we know this is all is a garbage. You must have not, you, you must have yourself, you don't, you know, Islam is a garbage. That's why you don't want it. Why Muslims in Tunisia don't want Islam? Why you don't have Sharia? All of us renew. Islam does not exist unless you practice Sharia. So to say it's an Islamic state, but yet there's no Sharia, it's a fake state. Why you don't have Sharia in Algeria, Morocco, Egypt, Libya, Syria, Iraq, Erdogan, the biggest, the, the biggest fraud in the history, who keeps speaking, reading Quran, claiming that he is the caliphate, but yet the casinos are open, nightclubs are open, prostitution is doing great, but now sadly because of Corona, you know, Erdogan is going bankrupt. They ask. Uh, they ask uh, the the highest uh, minister of Erdogan for religion, the, the the Mufti of Turkey, about why Erdogan don't close those night clubs. He said to them, "Those night clubs are paying for your salary." This is the truth. Those night clubs are paying for your salary. I used to have an app on my phone, I forgot. Let me get some water, sorry. <coughs> I forgot, I forgot the name of the app, but they told me like there is a group, you know, a Muslim groups are there, so, Maybe you can make some posts there, so I download it. And they told me there's a. Uh, they told me this guy. Remember this guy who had like uh, girls dancing with him, the shake. Let me refresh your memory. <clears throat> uh. What was his name? Uh, Rune. I forgot the, the name of the real name. Yeah, this guy. You remember him? Anyway, they told me he do broadcast live on uh, uh, whatever app, you know, he have all, uh, a group. So I did download the app, and then I changed the name of the country, and I put Turkey. And guys, oh guys, I mean, there's nothing there but women who they are naked. Call this number. All kind of service. This guy, 
you know, if, if you have my first book, by the way, I have his name there. You will find in the beginning, I'm speaking about him. Why? Because he is the first one who come with the propaganda that uh, 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 there is science in the Quran. This is the first guy. If you remember, there is a, uh, what his name? A guy who is supposedly converted to Islam. His name is Yusuf State. His, his wife, she called him useless, as he said. He said, I was going to do lecturer. And then I want something really convincing. And then a brother, he gave me a book to read. And it was perfect time to use it in the conference. It was about from this guy, Adnan Oktar, or he called himself Harun Yahya. And it was an amazing book. This is the guy who started the scam, Adnan Oktar. And this guy, he was a sheikh for the Muslims in Turkey all those years. Nobody complained about him. Nobody said one negative word about him. His TV is running, Erdogan is watching, everything is working perfectly. Until this guy one day, he said something negative about Erdogan. Suddenly he became a child molester. He is, I don't know if it's true or not, but obviously this guy, you know, you, this is, guys, this is his TV station. This is, this is Islamic TV station, live on air. I mean, honestly, I feel sad for myself. I mean, look at my TV station and look at his TV station. Look who is listening to me and look who is listening to him. This is not even fair, man. I mean, why I'm not getting this, uh, you know, I mean, something wrong with my program. I mean, there is something not good. And look, he, he, look how many iPad, look how big the iPad he have, the biggest ones. I mean, how he got those a huge iPad? And all the girls, they are wearing almost nothing, and they have surgery for the lips, and their skirt is like one inch, alhamdulillah. And when he want to eat, look how he eat. I mean, imagine how I eat, and how, how this guy he eat. I got a uh, today, by the way, I ate only three bread. It's a bread, just a bread. I did not eat any food, just a bread. Honest to God. But don't think I am, you know, it's not because I have food, but yeah, I don't care. I mean, look at this guy. Look at his table and look at my table. I eat in the same computer table. That's a business. That is a real missionary. That is how you should do, you know, serve Allah. You want to see how you do it? Look at this. Look how many girls, man. He he entered the room. There's nobody. But there's nobody but women. I mean, do you see how many? Look. There's nobody there except women. Like how many of them, man? I mean, is that the seventy-two? Alhamdulillah. Ah, oh, this guy, he want to see, lower the, you, know, you want to see the skirt, huh? Can you lower the, the, you know, I got you. I know what you mean. I will tell your mom. Okay. And I will tell your wife if you are married. Can you lower it? Can you lower it, Christian Prince? <laughs> this is religion? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, brother. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. This is the guy who behind the science of Quran. All the scientific fact in the Quran came from this person only. And then after that, I look at this one. Look, I like this one actually. This is the impact of religion. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> I cannot say anything more than Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. And look, he, he was able, look, there's a transformation happening. See, she did wear the hijab. Finally.
Allah, he touched her chest, I mean her heart, sorry. And now she is wearing hijab. I mean, what do you want more? This is Islamic TV station. This is not uh, like those uh, stupid movies. They make somebody, you know, dress like somebody or, you know, this is, a, this is not a movie. This is a real program and this is a real shake. And this guy, he lived like a king. Rose rise, he have his own yacht. I mean, money was coming like rain because of what he did to serve Allah. And the poor me, you know. Uh, the one is asking me to gather my YouTube videos, my friend. What about you? Help me. You do it. You do. You guys, you do it. Poor me. I have no time for anything. Trust me. Like, isn't it enough I'm making the videos? Do you want me to go and collect my videos? I have thousands. And not only that, don't talk to me now. I'm very sad. I mean, don't you see? Look at the dudes around me and look at the dudes around him. Those are dudes, supposedly. I mean, life is not fair. Look at this. Do you think I can open a channel uh, like a da'wah channel in Turkey? Do you think Erdogan will give me a license? I'm thinking about it. I will go there, open a TV station, like this, you know, and then invite the followers of Allah, females only, and we make it simple, you know, we have to be blonde, and your, your, short, your skirt must be long, you know, long, very long, it have to be like, two inch maximum and uh, you are good in dancing and look at the lips I mean what happened to their lips like did this woman she fail from that seventh floor over her lips obviously all of them they have all of them they have surgeries breast surgeries fake eyelashes fake lips fake face everything hmm Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> but you know, I mean, it's not right to be. Are you jealous? Come on, you cannot do that. <clears throat> this is the one who's behind the Quranic science. And by the way, all Muslim they copy his work and nobody nobody have a problem with him can you believe it imagine if it's me let us say dancing in a wedding party just wedding party nothing I mean nothing uh, not like this you know like somebody invite me to a wedding party and the Muslim they have a video and dancing they will make a scandal about it and look how he sit in the table and he is staring That is a... Have your channel su 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 uh, suffered strike? My friend, this is not my channel. This is one of them. Don't you see I have only 36,000? This is just one of many channels I have as a backup because we keep getting the strikes. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. And you know, by the way, when when the when the teaching of Allah touch you, you get. I mean, the reason those girls their their clothes is short because it's the heat of uh, belief. You know, you feel hot. I mean, the more hot you get, the more clothes you take off. I mean, here they are. Obviously, they are things is getting really hot. I think he was reading the chapter of an nikah for them. You know, the chapter above the heaven. Boom, boom. Look at this, if you want to play those videos, you will go crazy. Live on TV, this guy, all of this, by the way, is kind, is taken from his live program. Actually, let me see which one is his official one. Maybe this one. <clears throat> the 
This one is an English channel. I need to find the original one. Arun Yahya, live stream. Seven hours live stream. Ten hours live stream. I mean, I cannot do that. Only Harun Yahya can do this. Ten hours live stream, and it's about scientific miracle in the Quran. Brother, scientific miracles in the Quran. And now I passed the first six hours, and then finally I'm here in this uh, section. See, they go and they do interview, you know, but go back now to science. Here, geology, geology. I mean, this guy, he left his fingerprint on the Islamic world. All the garbage of Islamic science is coming from like biology, history, science. All of it is in the Quran. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. You have to agree with those Turkish girls are beautiful. Well, I don't want to talk about women because you don't know what is beautiful for me. I don't want to mention it because people get upset. But for me, any woman she is fake is not beautiful. Doesn't matter who. Anyone who put tons of makeup, do some, you know, surgeries, even if they are just makeup, she don't look beautiful for me. If you cannot accept your beauty to be beautiful without doing all this madness, that means you yourself are not convinced to be beauty. Otherwise, you, why you want to do it? Correct? If your beauty is something you earn from false adjustment that you do to your body, obviously you yourself, you are not convinced that you are pretty and you are not confident. So why I will be considering you? Why any man will think you are beautiful? Right? And if you look at them, all of them, they are fake. So for me, they don't, they don't look beauty. For me, they look like a zombie. You know, I will not be comfortable to sit next to any of them, even if I don't, she is not a Muslim, regardless. Those are false people. <clears throat> No, I mean, it's not about natural only. I mean, if you if you are trying, if you start doing things to yourself, obviously, you yourself are not convinced that you look good. I feel sorry for you. Seriously, I feel sorry for you if you do that. So you're trying to convince me that you are good looking by makeup and, you know, obviously you don't. And I'm not talking about like somebody putting little makeup like here or there, you know, it's okay, but... Uh, those people they are heavily look at this man okay guys I think I'm going to go and join the party there and I will open my camera for you look how many girls there I mean what is this how much money he spent you see those girls are not coming those are paid those are hookers you can tell those are not normal girls you find in the street how much money this guy is making and how much money he is spending. And look, if I can get those girls here in my program, look, I have only 498 people watching. Oh boy. What I will tell my grandma. I have only five. Look, now it's getting higher because we put the pictures here. The number is increasing. Yeah. Soon we will be 600. Hmm. Those are Ukrainian girls, no, my friend. Those are Turkish girls, and all of them they speak Turkish and they interview them, they speak to them. Where are you from, Mr. Uh, Morani? Maruni, why are you are trying to insult Ukrainian girls? 
supposedly in your country there's no prostitutes? Like your country is the decent one? Anyway, <clears throat> I better change, otherwise we would end in the wrong place. Back to the topic. Do we have any Muslim want to say something good for us about Islam? Anyone? Yeah, you see, when I say Turkey, it doesn't mean that every woman in Turkey is the same. But Turkey, obviously, have a huge business of prostitution. And uh, Turkish people are not into religion. You know, it's not a secret. But the appearance is that uh, Turkish are Muslims. But in reality, they are not. Mm -hmm. And about prostitutes, I think every single country have a prostitute, regardless of what you call them, Christian country, Muslim countries, Hindu countries, prostitution is all over. And prostitute is not only the women who sell herself, prostitute is the man who sleep with her too. If you sleep with the hooker, you are a hooker. You are no better. You know, especially those Middle Eastern men, they have mentality, they look down at women who they are hookers, but the fact they are the number one customers, and they are hookers too. In the Middle East, if you go sleep around, your parents will be proud about you. I mean, our son, every day with a new girl, you know, they, they speak highly of you because you are a filthy. This is their culture. But if the girl, she do that, oh man. Not my daughter, right? So don't speak about others. Just look under your table. Anyway, do we have any Muslim here? Would I say anything? Any Muslim? Any smart one? Well, the cats are using women, the women using men, the men using women. Doesn't matter who do it, he is bad. There is women who they are forced into prostitution, but there is women they are not. So they bend. Well, Turkey is the biggest country for Mutan. There's no Muslims? Are we out of them? What is the reason prostitution is bad? Okay, donkey. I mean, donkey monkey. This is your name? No problem, my friend. Prostitution is bad because simply, you see, it's not just only about sex. It's about you going low going very long. There's millions of jobs and profession to earn money from. You are bankrupt to the point you could not find something to do except sex. That is what is bad. Additional to that, the one you sleep with, obviously he is 30 person too. Because if he is a good man, he will not do it. So you are not doing business with good people, you are doing business with filthy people. Cheaters, criminals, liars, all kind of men. And a man who respects himself, he will not pay a woman to sleep with him. The second you pay a woman to sleep with you, simply you are saying you are so bad to the point you are disgusting actually, to the point you have to pay somebody just to touch your hand. This is how bad you are. It's an insult to the man. 
it's an insult to the women. So I believe the one who practice prostitution is both men and women, because women, she cannot be prostitute alone. She need a man prostitute. Doesn't matter who got paid. If you are the one who pay or you are the one who receive the payment, both of you are prostitute. I know some men will be upset from me because they do that. Oh, who care? This is the truth. Garbage in, garbage out. Right? Garbage in, garbage out. Uh, do you think it's about trying to trade sex for love is missing? What love, my friend? First of all, you know, the second you are doing sex business, you don't believe in love. You don't. You are empty love, and you will lose it, actually. You cannot love anyone after that, if you are a person who do business of sex, because you have millions of images of men and women you step with. Let us say one day you decide to get married. Hmm? And now your husband is sleeping with you. Which man you remember? The first one, the second one, the third one, the hundred, the two hundred, the three hundred, the four hundred. You cannot, you cannot delete those memories from your head. I accept when I say I disagree with you regarding Turkey. Now, my friend, I can show you right now tens of thousands in Istanbul. The majority of people of Istanbul is against Islam. So you are wrong. Depend on the location. And you forgot maybe that Turkey was anti-Islam for a long time. Where was the Muslims? What do you see today that Erdogan, he got into the government and he will not leave? He start firing all the officers from the army who they are anti-Islam. He fire all the judges. He change all the police. So they are holding into the government, not by election. All the election is fraud. Muslims, when they get into government, they don't leave. They don't leave unless you kick them out. They, they go through democracy, because this is the only way in the beginning. But after they get in, you cannot kick them out unless you make a revolution. And the only way to get rid of Erdogan is revolution. This is what happened with the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. This is what happened with the president of Sudan in Sudan, Sudan, or Sudan. There's, you cannot get rid of them, that's it. They take over the government, they practice Sharia Allah, they use it as a way to subdue everybody, so nobody open his mouth, and uh, they will not leave until you go for war. So no, Turkey is not really Islamic. Even Iran is not Islamic, <laughs> you know? You see, I am a Middle Eastern, don't tell me who is Islamic. Don't tell me please who is Islamic. There's no Islamic in the Middle East. Small, tiny minority, they are the terrorists, they control everybody. How many members they join ISIS? How many? Few, small number. Did you ask yourself why not everybody join ISIS? ISIS exists, they established themselves in Syria, right? And in Iraq. Where is the Muslims who believe if what you are saying is true, we will not even have Erdogan. We will not have even Turkey as it is today. We will have a caliphate. They are not Islamic. Nobody wants Islam. Uh, Yeah, and you know, uh, Western government, they use Islamic or Islamist for their agenda. You know, you forgot what CIA did with Osama bin Laden. They are the one who train him. They are the one who help him. 
they are the one who sent congressmen, senators, they went to Afghanistan and they were saying to them, Allahu Akbar. McCain, just a few years ago, before he died, this potato, he went to Syria, he took pictures with ISIS leader. The West is in the bed with the terrorists. This is the truth. They sponsor them. They support them. Obama, he gave $600 million from your money as an American citizen to ISIS. And that is the excuse to sponsor democracy. Have you ever heard of Americans sponsoring democracy anywhere? Where? Which country? Do we sponsor democracy in, Turk in, in, in Turkey? Look what Turkish are doing. Trump, he did not put sanctions in Erdogan. He waited all four years before he go. He put sanctions in Erdogan because he's stopping the agreement between Qatar and Israel. That's what he cared for. Four years, he did not put sanctions in Turkey. He threat. He go blind about Turkey. Turkish killing Christians, Turkish uh, uh, killing the Kurdish, Turkish taking churches, making them convert them to mosque. He don't see it. He never heard of it. He's a potato. I remember I voted for Trump, but he's a potato. He's a coward. Uh, yeah, always the NATO, they support terrorists. Always, always, never stop. And they will never stop doing that. It's for their benefit to have the terrorist. You know, in the Middle East, we have a guy, his name is Jiha or Juha. He's a comedy guy, you know, supposedly he was exist in the history. And this guy, he do funny stuff. One of the stories of Juha, he sold his house to a guy. And he told him, all the house is yours, but I want to keep only one nail in the wall. This is mine. And I have the right to use it anytime. The guy said, okay. He gave him good price too. I mean, cheap price. So the guy was so happy. He got nice house. And this guy, all what he want is just to use a nail in the wall of his house. Sure. No problem. You know? So the guy, he moved in, and then this guy, Juha, he come to the house at the middle of the night, knock at the door. The guy, he opened the door, what you want? He said, what you forgot? We agree. I have the right to use the nail. O okay. So he take his donkey all the way to the living room where the nail is, and he tie his donkey there. The guy, he said, you, you, you cannot do that. He said, no, I can. We have a contract. And this is what the nail of the NATO in the Middle East, Islamist. If there's no Islamist, they will have to leave. As simple as that. If there's no Islamist, those countries will flourish. As simple as that. Islamist is the way to destroy those countries, to keep them stupid, to keep them ignorant, to keep them in the cave time. You take Islam from the Middle East, you will find different countries. As simple as that. Islam is a necessity to keep those countries savage. Right? <clears throat> uh... Yeah, I mean, all, all things, whatever happened, like, you know, the Turkish attack Armenia, killing thousands of their young men, taking their land, humiliating them. Trump is watching. Trump, he did not even see it. I you know, I lost, I lost my respect to this man, actually. And I voted for him just a few weeks ago, but because we don't have a choice. The other guy is Joe Biden's husband. I mean, we have a guy, he's, he don't even remember his name. But welcome to America. In America, we don't vote for a president. We, we vote for two, don two donkeys. One, he will hit you in your nuts. 
and the other one he will hit you in your stomach. So choose which one. Both of them they will hit you. We don't have election. I mean, have you ever heard of election? There's only two guys. That's it from all America because there's two party, and the two party is in, in the control of the mafia. Let us say the corporations, the rich ones. They are the one who decide who will be a president. And the rest, us, you know, we are the poor. Okay, they give us two. Choose one of them. It's like a game, you know, like a, uh, we have two toys. Which one you take? Huh? But they are the one who choose the toy for us. Uh, Sharia law mean practicing what Muhammad he said uh, for everything, for the way as uh, a capital punishment, marriage, inheritance, uh, anything about life, you know, a man he do. Like, you know, what the law do in every country. And instead of normal law, civil law, you have Sharia law, which means according to Islam. This is what Sharia means. Sharia is uh, what Allah he made law for. Um, all right. Do we have any serious question? Do we have any Muslim here? Do we have any Muslim? And you know, all those who come as a president, all of them, they play the game, they are Christians, you know? All of them, they are Christians. Just wait, like, you know, Joe Biden, you will see him in the, in the you know, he's going to the, uh, to the, uh, to, uh, to uh, Christmas uh, service. All of them. And they will hold the Bible with them. All of them, they are good believers. Anyway. Actually, I believe that Trump, he did, he did lose the election because the business industry of war, they did not like his action. This guy, he have he made a promise. He will take all his army from abroad, from, from abroad, from everywhere. He want to take them from Germany. He want to take them from Afghanistan, from Syria, you name it. And because of that, the war mafia, they were angry from him. You see, the war business is billions, trillions of dollars. It's the biggest business in USA. So this guy, he did not do what they want. He is the only president he did not go for war during presidency. Not even single one of them. Could you do topic in Sufism in order to open eyes of sub? Uh, sub Saharan African who are being deceived by generous Eka Marboots. I don't know what do you mean by Marboots. Sufism, you see, because Islam is a, is a religion, does not have, uh, let us say, any kind of uh, spirituality. And Islam forces other people to convert to Islam. So Sufism came to replace what is missing in Islam. And this is why you will see Sufi, they, like, they start doing music and dance, which is really crazy. When Muhammad, he forbid the music, he forbid this kind of behavior, but uh, Sufi, they have to do it for simply uh, Islam is empty, you know? I mean, you give us a religion, there's nothing there except circumcision, sex, food. That's it. And killing people. But there's people who don't want that. So Sufism came to replace. replace. And actually, the one who established Sufism was a belly dancer. She was a hooker herself. Uh, <clears throat> if you see what the Sufi they do, you will die laughing, actually. Let us see. This is a Sufi video, just an example. And uh, by the way, the the real Muslim, they go after them and they bomb their mosque and you know, 
This is Islam, my friend. So this is one of their leaders. He's a big leader, supposedly, and he scared the hell of me. He have eyeliner because Muhammad supposedly used to put eyeliner like him, you know. But the weird, he did not color his beard like Muhammad to make it to blonde. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> so now he's sitting, and they start dancing in front of him. Oh. This is sophism. What is this? Oh boy. Happy, 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 hey. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this guy. Subhanallah, subhanallah, brother, subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a, this is Sufism. It's a stupid, you know. Uh, they are, you know, because their their religion is dead. There is no music. There is no art. If, if, you know, the one they say to you, Islamic art. What Islamic art is about making straight lines. They cannot draw even a, a plant. You cannot draw a tree. It's haram. Uh, and every country they have their own like fiction Sufism. Like as an example, if you go to Shishenia, you will see this. You know, in Shishina. Uh, by the way, the Turkish are Sufi too. Turkish are Sufi, those are Sufi. They are, they are terrorists too. But Sufi is have nothing to do with Islam. You know, look at this. A bunch of crazy bears going crazy. I don't know if you like to be their neighbor. Yeah. It's like, you know, the ants, when the ants, they go around, you know, the, when the ants, they go around, like around uh, something. And I don't know why the ants do it. But look at this. And what is this? You know? And then they start running and they start jumping and then they slow down and they start hitting down. Look, look at this, look at this. What is this? You tell me, yeah, you know. <laughs> and then they are so close to each other and they suddenly one of them he stopped, they stop. You know, the leader he stopped, like you know, and look now. What is this? It's like zombie, you know, zombie? This is zombie. Look, even if they are walking like zombie. And right away you feel that there's no peace in this cult. It's evil. The screaming, the etc. No. What is this? In so in uh, in Turkey they come with a new uh, way of Sufism, you know, which is uh, the the. Uh, the dance, the go, those guys, they go, they go around themselves. You know, they go around themselves. If you remember them, this is another form of Sufi dance. And the funny, even some filthy, uh, coward Christian priest, they invite them to dance in a church. Do you believe it? And they excuse that this is an art. Look at this. Yeah, shake it. Shake it or break it. Yeah. This is a this is the start, you know? And then the dance will start, the music will start. And uh, yeah, look at this. What is it? It's like being hepatized, you know, like uh, just uh, losing yourself, be crazy. But all of this have a reason. Because Islam is anti-music, Islam is empty, there's no spiritual. Those people, they've been forced to convert to Islam and trying to replace what is missing with something. What Muhammad said about the music? Let us see. The one who practices music, Allah will make him a monkey. And the ground even will swallow him. The, the 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 mountains will fail on him. 
You see it? But if you ask Muslims, how many Muslims there is in this earth? They will count the Sufi. Because Sufi, Sufi is Turkey. All of Turkey is Sufi. Mostly, 90, maybe 90% 90 of the Muslims in Turkey are Sufi. If not more, you know. Uh, uh, you go to Azerbaijan, you know, they are Shia. They count them. You go to Iran, they count them. But they are Shia. But if you ask a Muslim Sunni, is Shia Muslim? They will say no. Is the Sufi Muslim? They will say no. Is the Hadiyah Muslim? They will say no. But you ask them how many Muslims they count all of, all of them. You know what I mean? You count, you ask them how many Muslims there is in the world, they will say to you, like the number now, every two, week, every two weeks they have given you a number, 1.6. Now they will say 1.28. Uh, and two weeks from now they will say 2 billion. Just wait. By, by the next year they will say we are 3 billion. <clears throat> Salah al is, uh, is a Kurdish, you know, terrorist. Uh, he killed Muslims, he killed the Christians, and yeah, he enslaved the Christians. But you know, the Muslims, when they kill Muslims, they kill you for you are leaving Islam, not because you are a Muslim. Like, you know, when they make article about ISIS saying ISIS, they killed Muslims. They are not killing Muslims. That's not true. They are killing those who they are not practicing Islam, and the, and Muhammad made it clear: anyone who don't practice Islam, kill him. Muhammad even he said, "I was going to burn a group of people, burn them alive, burn them inside their houses, for they did not show up in Friday prayer." Yeah, Shishenia or Sufi. I mean, you name it. But the question, you see, in this uh, the the Islamic sect, uh, Muslims are really hypocrite. You know, Egypt was Shia. All of Egypt was Shia. You see, Al-Azhar University, this is not Islamic Sunni University. This is made and established by Shia. The one who built it is a Shia. You change the ruler, in one day the whole country became Sunni. That's it. <laughs> you see how much believing they are? I mean, from Shia country to Sunni country, The Caliphate in Baghdad, they were Shia. The Caliphate in Egypt was Shia. The one who destroyed the Kaaba was Shia. Al Qurmati was Shia. What happened? The one who stole the black stone and he did not return it back until the Muslim Sunni paid him money. You know? He took it for more than 21 years, 22 years. He went to the uh, Kaaba and he was screaming, Hey Allah, where is your uh, birds? Where is the birds? You? Because in the Quran, if you remember, there's a chapter, it's called the chapter of the elephants. In that chapter, the Quran claim, according to Muhammad, that Allah, he sent birds against an army uh, which was trying to destroy the Kaaba. If you go in the Quran and you go all the way to the chapter of the field, the elephant. So this guy, he went to the Kaaba and he exposed Muhammad and his lies. And he's a Shia. His name is Al-Qurmuti. He destroyed the Kaaba. He stand in the top of the stones of the Kaaba and he was screaming to Allah, says, hey Allah, where is your elephants? <laughs> where is the elephants? Huh? That's why even Muslim books, they say at that time, the major number of Muslims, they left Islam after they saw what happened. And this guy, he did it on purpose. He did destroy the Kaaba to show them that Muhammad is a fraud, Islam is a lie. Was the Kamash, Kamashinas secret so you rest? I don't know what the Kamashinas Garamash. Maybe you can say it to me in Arabic so I can understand what you are saying, my friend. <clears throat> anyway, this guy, he got, he got Allah busted, big deal. You know, he destroyed the Kaaba, no, no, no bird came, as the story here, the story claimed that the Christian king from Ethiopia, he came to destroy the Kaaba, and Allah, he sent birds to destroy this king and his army. Right? 
So when al qurmati come, what is the birds of Allah? And this guy, not only he destroyed the Kaaba, he killed more than 10,000 Muslims in Mecca. He slaughtered them. And the Kaaba was destroyed many times. And this is according to Muslim books, not according to us. Many times, where is the elephants? Where is the birds of Allah? So Allah, he sent birds. He sent a swarm of flying creatures. And those creatures, they are carrying rocks made by clay, which is backed, which is funny. I mean, Allah is cooking clay. <laughs> and you know what make it more funny? That an army of elephant is coming to Saudi Arabia. Oh, you mean the Qaramita? The Qaramita. Oh, okay, your English is making it right. Yeah, Al Qaramita. Yeah, they, they even established their own state. But anyway, so all the story is fiction. You cannot take an elephant to the desert of Saudi Arabia because it's impossible. Elephant, he need at least six hundred liters of water a day. He need to spray himself. He need to cool himself. He cannot walk in the heat for long. Elephant, they don't they don't sweat. They are not the same as the camel. The camel actually, I mean the camel, they have their system, but elephant they cannot survive in a desert unless there is water. They can jump inside the water during daytime, or at least go under the trees. An elephant in the desert is impossible. His skin will be ripped off from the heat. Literally. His skin will, you know, the reason elephant, they, they spray water on them, you see them in the zoo. Or if you watch like a live camera in Africa, there's a an, there's an, uh, page on YouTube, it's called Africam, I think. Most of the time I put it in, in my screen. Uh, because it's have really wild animals, they come giraffe and or birds, very good. The sound of the birds is nice. So you you will see that the elephants they have to spray themselves always in the daytime, for their system doesn't work. They don't have a cooling system. What did Muhammad say about Christmas? He said nothing, which is weird. Nothing. <clears throat> Yeah, well, this is a legion that exists before Muhammad, and Muhammad, as usual, he copy legions. You know, the big, the biggest chapter of legions, if you want to read about legions, where Muhammad, he get himself busted badly, if you go to chapter 18 in the Quran, that is the best. And then you can go to chapter 27, the chapter of the ant, which is very funny too. But this chapter, I believe, if you want to convince anyone that Muhammad is nothing but a fraud, let him read that chapter and read the interpretation. <coughs> well, Abel, I know, I know it's a fiction story, but Muhammad, <coughs> obviously, he copied from previous generation. You know what uh, what Arab used to do? There was twenty six Kaaba, twenty six Kaaba. Some they say 27. And each Kaaba tried to promote itself. People, they build the Kaaba in their city or town or village. And they want people to come because Kaaba is a business. People, they bring money, buy, spend. It's like Las Vegas, you know, it's a business. Religion is a business. Until now, actually, religion is a business. There's many, they practice religion as a business, even from those who call themselves Christians. You will see a priest, he will not go to the funeral unless you pay him. Well, you, the guy is dead, he will not even pray on you. You have to pay him first. He's doing business, like Muhammad. So, religion was a great business before. Religion is a great business today. If you see the videos made by the Korean boys in Korean YouTube, like the, the last one he made, a, he called himself Rashid, he converted to Islam. And then he got bored, he have enough money, he, he want to stop. So he told them, well, I did it because everybody do it, to make money. You say you convert to Islam, Muslim, they subscribe by tens of thousands. If you make videos in YouTube, nobody will subscribe. 
you will stay slow, it will take you maybe forever until you get attention. But you say convert to Islam and you will see how fast your channel will grow. Just to want to make money. So, uh, and Muhammad is no different. Muhammad, he was doing his own YouTube at that time. This is YouTube, like the Quran. Muhammad, he collect fictions, and this is why people, they were laughing at him. Muhammad was really stupid, actually, even Arab, they make fun of him. Uh, if you read the, the, the chapter 18, as an example, speaking about people of the cave, what is the people of the cave story? You can go right now and search for the seven sleepers. This is a Christian story written by a priest, priest, Christian priest from Syria. He wrote a story, a fiction story for the youth, saying to them, today you are discriminated, future is good. This is the purpose of the story, that a king, he chased youth, Christian youth, and uh, God, he sent an angel, he opened his arms in the front of the cave, he blind the soldiers from seeing the cave, and then he protected and then uh, they, they slept for 300 years and after 300 years they come up and the king is gone the world has changed everybody became christian it's a fiction story muhammad he took it he put it in the quran and you will see here even the quran when you speak about those people you, you die laughing you know as an example <clears throat> They asked Muhammad, okay, how many the people of the cave, how many they are? Muhammad was not sure from the story. I mean, the original story. So Muhammad, uh, because he's not sure, he cannot give a sure answer. And look what he said. Chapter 18, verse number 22. Okay, let us say I'm a person who claimed that I know. And then you ask me a question. Okay, Christian Prince, how many people of the cave? And now I'm going to give you the answer. But listen here, the story is different. Because the one who gave the answer is Allah. You know what I mean? The one is talking here is Allah. The question was given to Muhammad, but the one is answering is Allah himself. So there's no point of saying some they say, some they say. Look at, look at the answer. Some will say there are three and their dog is number four. And some, they say their dog, they are five, and their dog is number six. Guessing at random. And some, they say they are seven, and their dog is number eight. And now Allah will give you the answer. Look at the answer. Okay, Muhammad, say to them, Allah knows best of their number. <laughs> say to them, Okay, Muhammad, Habibi, Habibi, Muhammad, say to them that only Allah knows their number. And look how stupid it is. Not only that, he says, and none knows their number save a few. But what is the number? You just said none knows their number. Allah knows best. And none knows save a few. Are you from the few? I mean, have you ever heard of hilarious teacher? You go to his classroom, you ask him, okay, Allah, how many those are in the cave? And then he starts saying, some, they say there are three, and their dog, and so, by the way, how in the world, in which language, you say their dog is number four? Rabi'ahum. Even in English, you cannot say that, because he's a dog, supposedly. He's a dog. You do not, you do not add dog to the numbers. I mean, have you ever heard of saying, I saw four, uh, three men and the, and, uh, and the, and the fourth, uh, uh, their dog? That doesn't work because he's not a man. You say three men and one dog. And not number four is the, you know, Mr. the dog Jerry. <laughs> so he doesn't know the number and he's afraid to say the number so they will get him busted because this is the, the purpose of the question. How many they are? They want to see how much he knew. And because you do not know, so he have to give them all the options, and Allah knows best. And only few, brother, they knew the answer. Okay, what is the answer? And look, none knows theirs. They, 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 them save a few. 
1. Isn't this is enough to prove that this guy is a fraud? And here in the Arabic language, you see here they translate their dog. It doesn't say dog. Those are stupid Abdul. They do not know Aramaic. You see, in the uh, in the original Quran, it was Kaliahum, not Kalbahum. Kaliahum, their protector, their provider, which is supposedly from the original story, is an angel. Kaliahum. So this angel. He is their provider, his pro their protector, not a dog. Islam considers dogs are filthy. Since when the dog is, is something holy in the Quran? Isn't it Muhammad said, the one who have a dog, Allah will, uh, will, will take from his deed? Suddenly the dog is in the Quran. But because they could not understand what the word here mean, so they have a mistake in reading it. So they made the Kalba home, which is very close to Kaliya home. Actually, I believe if you go and read the interpretation, you will find a lot of stupidity, stupidity in the and confusion, confusion about uh, the dog thing. Let us see. <laughs> uh, and if you read the interpretation, guys, you will die laughing. You will die laughing, and they are saying like, and the, you know the the purpose of this is to guess. But what? what? The purpose of this is to guess. <laughs> uh, let us see. I will try to find it. Maybe I will make some special video about this. Yeah, and their dog. And not, and not only that, actually. Uh, you see, if you go in the Quran, uh, the Quran, because this is not a dog, it says that he opened his two arms. Have you ever heard of a dog have two arms? Hmm? Any Muslim can tell us where, since when, the dog have two arms? How many arms the dogs have? <clears throat> Any Muslim knows? Because according to my knowledge, which is limited, I never thought that dogs have two arms. At least not in Arabic language. He have legs. Any Muslim? Anyone? How the dog he open his two arms? No, Abdul? <clears throat> okay, let us go there. Look at this. Because they understood the word angel wrong. The angel, it's an angel, not a dog, you idiot. So it says here, and their dog stretching out his paws. It doesn't say that. This is false translation. It says his two arms, ذراعيه. So if you tra change the translation, this is Yusuf Ali, or this is Bektar. Let us see Hilali and Khan as an example. It says 
He's stretching his two four legs. <laughs> his two four legs. <laughs> they are two four legs. They're trying to fix it. You know? You can copy the word dira'ihi and post it in Google right away and you will find this is arms. This is not legs. But because they are stupid, they could not understand the Quran language, which is obviously taken from the Aramaic. He was saying their angel. So the angel turned into their dog. And this is explain why the Quran is saying here that he is opening his two arms. This is the angel. He blocked the cave. This is what the story is saying. So he opened his arms blocking the cave so the army was chasing those seven sleepers they cannot go in uh, non-muslim who could not pay jizya usually they kill them uh, but in some places when the when the king let us say he need money he accept jizya even from non-muslims depending on what they want but if you are not if you know i mean uh, I, I thought maybe you are saying none of Christians. Uh, Jizya first is something for the Christian and the Jews only. But in some places, Muslims accepted non-Muslims who they are not Christian, neither Jews, to pay Jizya because they need money. All right. Even in some places like in Egypt, when a village announced they want to convert to Islam, the Caliphate, he refused. He don't want them to convert because if everybody converts, who's going to pay us money? How we will make living? So he he, he told the, the the leaders, don't allow them to convert. We don't want them to convert. They have to stay Christian and pay jizya. You know what I mean? Those people are poor; they cannot pay. So they said to himself, "Okay, you know what? Let's convert. Forget. It. You know, we will worship our God in secret." So he knew that they are trying to get rid of the jizya so he refused he, he want money there's tons of hadith about uh, jizya there is tons of hadith there is one of them i don't know if i can find it speaking about that you no know, jizya is the livestock of your children's Maybe I will try to find it. Um, anyway, uh, you know, I'm so so glad that they they have jizya. Otherwise, all the Christian in the Middle East either they are dead, or they will convert. You know, but because Muhammad. He was a filthy, you know, money worshipper. So he wanted, if you go in the Quran, even when the Quran says about the jizya, it says it clearly, if you are afraid from being poor, Allah will enrich you. You know? The purpose was for the jizya is to enrich you. If you go to chapter 9, <clears throat> and then here you will find read it so he said if you and after this here if you fear a poverty Allah will reach you from his bounty 
the verse after it right away says go and kill them and make them pages yeah so the jizya was a way to make living for the muslims they are terrorists who have no business to do they don't know how to make money or even they are outlaw criminals and okay now we took over what we would do next we killed the we killed all the jews and the christians run away so what we will do oh we chase them we go after them don't worry you will make money so because muhammad he loved money i am still now christian that's the truth and the one who keep paying the money to survive is the true believers the one who is weak he converted because not everybody will stay he accept all this discrimination all this humiliation all this garbage on you there's a video i will try to find it a muslim sheikh he's telling the muslims making fun of the christians he says imagine in the time of the caliphate a christian he cannot even ride the donkey facing the street he have to face the ass of the 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 the, the, the bottom of the donkey which means you turn your back to the head of the donkey so your son will ask you, hey, dad, why you are not facing the street normally and you are facing the bum of the donkey? He say, Christian, we are Christian. You know, son, we are Christian. We cannot ride the donkey like everybody. He's proud about it. This is how Muslims, they were able to transform nations from their belief into Islam. Either you pay or you die or you convert. <clears throat> Yeah, I know a story about Ibn Walid. He cooked a Muslim man and he raped his wife and he ate him. Yeah, all of them, they are, they are terrorists. They are terrorists. And that's why you see Islamic history, you know, like uh, when, when, uh, when the Muslim fabricate a, a statement about George Bernard Shaw saying this and saying that, go and read the history of Muhammad. He himself, he died by poison. His wife, she took an army to kill Ali. The Caliphate, they killed the grandsons of Muhammad. All of them are criminals. Uthman ibn Affan, before they kill him, they took the hair of his beard one by one. And then after they killed him, they cut his head. They took his body in the ground. They play with his head and they refused even to bury him with the Muslims. At the end, a group of Muslims secretly, they left his body in the, on the ground like a dog. This is their caliphate, the one who collect the Quran. And one of the reasons, by the way, he was killed because he burned the Quran, because there's many Quran. So those who they believe in the Quran, which is burned, they believe that uh, Uthman is a, kaf is a kafir. He burned the book of Allah. Uthman, he want to make a book which is the book he agree with, or let us say, uh, the book which is, he wanna, a Muslim, he said to him, Ifza, you know, jump, jump and save the Quran. We have many, many Qurans. So the, uh, Uthman, he took the advice of this man. He start collecting the Qurans, all the Qurans, which are different from each other. That's why they are different. That's why he burned them. If they are the same, he will not. And this was one of the reasons used against him to be killed. And they killed him. <clears throat> Any other question? Free Bright is back. Can I call you Christian? Out on your nonsense. Is that okay? Uh, uh, my friend, you are a Muslim, Mr. Free? Mr. Free, are you a Muslim? Are you a Muslim and saying to me, I'm not talking sense? Is that what you are saying? <coughs> Free Brit, are you a Muslim, my friend? <coughs> so why you want to call me? To tell me what exactly? If you are not a Muslim, what you want to, what you want to tell me exactly?
No, the, the one who became a slave usually is the one already they captured them in the war, you know. And uh, it, it's possible that, you know, you don't pay, they can. Depend, see, the jizya, the jizya is to stay the way you are. You don't pay it, they are free, they own you. They can kill you, they can enslave you, they can rape you, they can do whatever they want. But usually, you die. Or they will make money off you by selling you somewhere. <clears throat> why you are called pagan that like nobody knows you and suddenly you are called pagan free barrett uh, is back what 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 you said you said nothing and they start saying to you you are pagan that's it can you show me what you said so we can see why they said to you, you are pagan Are you there? See, I'm trying to, to see what, you, what your point is, otherwise I will block you myself if you are just here coming to disturb us. You got no idea? Oh, okay, well, here we go. As long as you got no idea, that's mean you are just seeking attention. Take care. Next time, come here, come with your parents. attention seeker <clears throat> anyway the history of Islam is a history of violence Muslims kill each other this is why the Muslim population was never growing you see now they are growing because uh, they are not the, who, who is the one causing Islamic uh, number grow is the West the West is stopping Muslims from killing each other who is the one who stopped Muslims from killing Muslims in Iraq America who is the one stopping Saudi Arabia from invading Qatar? Trump. Who is the one stopping Iran from invading Saudi Arabia? The stupid American. This is the, this is the reality. Before those stupid Western government come to exist, Muslims they never stop attacking each other. Never. Actually, they attack each other more than attack Christians. That's why their population is dead. Who is the one who destroyed the caliphate of Baghdad? Muslims. The caliphate of uh, Damascus? Muslims. The caliphate of Cairo? Muslims. Not the Christians. Right? Why now we have peace in the Middle East? If we can say that, you know. It's not perfect peace, but let us say, because now we have only, we have war in Syria, we have war in Iraq, we have war in Yemen. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the major places. The war in Libya. Okay, four countries. Four countries are burning. This is peace. Otherwise, they will be burning each other. Who is stopping Turkey from going in war now with Egypt? The stupid American. That's the truth. Take America away, take America away, those people, they will eat each other in a second. Why Iran is not attacking Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia is no match. Iran can take Saudi Arabia in, in a few hours. It doesn't take it even 10 hours. The reason is USA. So Islamic population increase because Western, they force peace between Muslims. As simple as that. America now is supporting the government of Afghanistan. Leave, what's your business? Shia and Sunni fighting in Afghanistan, what's your business? Stupidity. Who is stopping the war in Pakistan itself? Pakistan, Pakistan is a very messed up country. Extremely messed up. It's Western countries who's holding this country together. Same as Turkey.
Uh, all the tribe, all the Arab, all the, the Arab and non-Arab Muslims, and you know the Muslims, Arab or non-Arab, Persian, Turkish, you know, Turkish. The Turkish they slaughter tens of thousands of Arab, tens of thousands. They they enslave their daughters. They kidnap the young boys to take them as servants, and they kidnap even the men to take them to fight in the army of the Sultan. And the second the Turkish they take your son, you never see him again. That's it. The Sultan he want to build the palace. What they do? They come to the city. They force anyone who work in build as a builder, they have his skills. They take him. That's it. All those palaces, most of them is built by Christians. The Christians are the builders. The palaces of, of the Arab in Spain, those are builders are taken from the Middle East, from countries like Syria and Iraq. The, the ships which is built to attack Spain, this is made by Christians in Syria. Those people do not know how to make ships. Right? Where does it say Muhammad will marry the Virgin Mary in heaven? Yeah, well, this is a hadith. Uh, let me see, find it for you. I will post for you the link. You can use Google Translation or I can use Google Translation. But let me post for you the link first. Uh, in order to do it, I have to shorten the link because it's in Arabic, the title. Uh, link short. <clears throat> All right. All right, my friend, the one who asked, you can open the link and you can open it in Google browser and you can uh, click a translate. American president, past, present, uh, deals in many areas, okay, from Arab sheikhs and the tip. We know that, to be there. I mean, you don't blame them. They use the Arab to make money from them. All right. Anyway, the one who asked me, I gave you the link. You can open the link and then you can use Google Translation. Uh, to translate. Now here, this is the book, Majma'u Zawaid Al-Haythami, volume number nine, page number 218 this is one of the reference you know and it says here when Muhammad he was dying uh, when Khadija she was dying uh, he like there's one of the hadith it says that he said to her uh, say hello to Mary uh, to so to, to my sorry to my wife's in heaven so Khadija she said to him this is a different story. She said to him, uh, you have other wives beside me? Because this is the, his first wife. He said, no, but Allah, he married me to marry uh, the daughter of Imran and the wife of the Pharaoh and the sister of Moses. The guy he want to sleep with everybody is famous. Any woman she is a relative to somebody is famous. So he want to be, uh, he want to be the brother-in-law to Moses. He want to have the wife of the Pharaoh 
and he want to have sex with all of them and he want to marry uh, the mother of Jesus this is how faith he is now here they say that this hadith is weak as usual <coughs> Uh, let us see that will give you another this is Al Bidaya wa Nihaya to Ibn Kathir let me give you the link And you can use Google Translation too. All right. Where Jesus, where Muhammad, he got the information. There's a, there's a, there's Bibles which is not approved by the Christians. This is where the story is coming from. There's fiction Bible written way after, you know, long time after Christ. Those Bibles are saying, if we can call them Bibles, saying those stories. Muhammad, he got them from there. They call them the infinity. Infinity, and maybe I'm saying the word wrong. I posted the link. You did not see the link? What do you mean you see the link? I posted the link. Let me post again. You didn't see it? When I post it, here we go. I'm going to show it to you on the screen. I post it twice. Here we go. You are saying no link. And I posted the link. And I post it again. Here we go. So how there's no link? What YouTube will not allow links to go? I'm posting. Here we go. I'll post it again in front of your eyes. See it? There is something wrong with with the YouTube. Then they are not allowing link. Very weird. Well, I can post it under the info of the video. What I can do? There we go. I will post it there. You can click at the video info, and you will find the link. <coughs> Anyway, it's in the info now. Click at the info, you will see it. And this is the book of Ibn, uh, Ibn Kathir, Al Bidaya wa Nihaya. And it says, uh, I can use Google Translation right in the front of our eyes. Google Translation. No, it's not translating. I think we need to go out of the script. Here we go, translate to English. <coughs> the easiest way, try to find, search the word Mary or Maryam. You know, so Khadija, when she was in her illness, uh, you know, he said to her, that's, uh, you know, uh, say hello to my wives. She said, what wives? No. He said, oh, Allah, he told me he will marry me to those women. And he count for her. If you meet in your way, those women say hello to them. Uh, he said to her, uh, she said to him, did you marry before me? That's what you find in my books. He said, no, but Allah, he married me to marry the daughter of Amran. And Asiya, uh, supposedly the wife of uh, Pharaoh, and uh, Kathum, uh, the sister of Moses. Even the name is given to the sister of Moses. I mean, those names, we don't know where he's getting from. But this is how sick this man is. He had mental illness. All famous women, he want to have him, you know, he, he, uh, he have like a kind of... Uh, mental illness you, you think he is the greatest and everybody have to sleep with him so Allah promised him even women who are not exist no more in this earth very filthy creature 
it's a proof of mental illness. Anyway, anything else? <clears throat> Again, the one who won the link, you can find it in the info. You can find my books on Amazon.com. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I think we have enough for today. You see, uh, we, we try to share with you um, as much information we can, but uh, you know, we try to focus on one topic. So when they say to you, this great man said this about Muhammad and this great man says that about Muhammad, first, it's not true. Secondly, even if it's true, it's a lie. Because obviously Muhammad is nothing great about him. He's great as a criminal, you know. Uh, Prophet Idris, you see, if you, if you type the word Idris in the Quran, you see the Muslims, they give you a translation for it. Let me show you. And then you need to ask yourself how the word Idris became that prophet. You know? Chapter 19, verse number 56. Look what they say to you. Enoch. See who is Idris? Then you ask yourself, okay, how, how Enoch became Idris? I mean, what's wrong with this man? You know what I mean? Is even like, did they even share any letter together, the two names? Did they share anything? They don't even share one letter together. So how Idris became Enoch, you tell me. However, I believe that Muhammad, he copied from a book, it's called the Book of Enoch, but not the one is mentioned in the Bible. There's a book, is a fiction, there's a, a false book, it's called the Book of Enoch. Um, let me see if I can find it. Give me a second. And from that book, Muhammad, he got the stories about the, uh, the, the warehouse of Allah. You know, Allah have a warehouse where he stores snow, he store uh, material, you know. Um, let's see. Enoch. <clears throat> hmm, I'm trying to find it. Actually, I was, you know, I, I, I was writing about it in the in a book I started. It's called The Roots of the Quran. You know, I started writing this book in 2018. Until now, I did not finish it. Uh, here we go. Book of Enoch. So you have here. Let me show you. See how slow writing books is not easy. You know, people think like, okay, you sit and just that's it. You know, you finish writing a book so easy. Because, you know, the information is too much complicated and you have to be very careful. Uh, see, this is from 2018, those files. I'm working on them. And here you will find the book of Enoch. You know, the book of Enoch. I will open it, let's see. But that will make me stay for another two hours, man. <laughs> Come on, have mercy on me. <laughs> uh, uh, why do you say that Enoch uh, is a false book? I did not say Enoch false book. I said this is a false book of Enoch. This is not a true Enoch book. Focus when I say something. I said this is not the Enoch in the Bible. This is a different person. This is a different book. Now he will go and he will say, Christian Prince, he said Enoch is false. Here we go. Yeah, anyway. <clears throat> Uh, so this is the book of Enoch. Let us see.
Anyway, you can download it and you can read and you can compare and you will see how Muhammad he copied tons of stories. Maybe I can some sometime next year I take some break from going live and concentrate more in writing again. What I was reading is uh, is the best way to compare between religion, you know? But in order to compare, you have to know. You have to know more than one. Otherwise, you can't compare. So in order to compare Muhammad and his stories, you have to go back in history and see and know who or who, who did wrote those histories before Muhammad or wrote those stories. Um, yeah, you see here, like here, you see some ideas, you get some ideas, like this is a, this chapter here, from the hands of advance toward the north, to ext uh, extremist, extremist of the earth. And then I saw uh, a great and a glorious wonder at the extremities of the whole earth. I saw there's heavenly gates opening into the heaven, three of them uh, distinctly separated. Uh, the northern winds proceed from them, blowing cold and hail, forest and snow, dew, dew and rain, from one of the gates, you know, like if you are a person who knows very well Islam, then you will right away, right away those images will come to your head and you will be able to compare. But if you do not know much about Islam, you will you will see there is no connection. As an example, where Muhammad, he said that uh, cold is coming from. Anyone knows? <clears throat> Anyone remember? Where cold is coming from, where heat is coming from? Cold is coming from heaven. Allah, uh, He opened uh, the gate of heaven in winter time, and He make a hell breathe, and then He opened hell doors in summer time, and this is where the hot weather coming to you. Uh, let me see where I can find. <coughs> Uh, I'm trying to find the hadith. Um, <clears throat> Let us see here. And then after you read it, you will see the connection between what we are showing on the screen and what Muhammad is saying. Uh, 
All right, let us see this one. You see, always the problem is to find something in English. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Read with me here. The prophet said, in a very hot weather uh, daily, uh, uh, delay the, the Zohar prayer. Zohar is like the noon time prayer. Till it become a bit cooler, because severity of heat is from the ragging of the hellfire. The hellfire uh, 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 complained to the Lord, saying, "O oh Lord, my parts are eating, or which means supposedly destroying one another. It's, it's burning. So Allah He allowed to take it to breathe, to breathe." one in the winter and one in the summer the breathe in the summer at the time when you feel uh, the servant uh, the, the severest here heat and the breathe in the winter in the time when you feel uh, the severe cold so there's a gate in heaven and allah he allowed the cool weather to come and breathe uh, let us see here. Actually, I'm trying to look for different hadith, not, not exactly this one. But anyway, this one will do the job temporarily until we find the other one. Let me see. So always Muhammad, he, you know, he, he copied his stories from somewhere. Um, <clears throat> See, I'm trying to find the other hadith which I want to show you. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. I have many reference here in front of me, but I cannot find anything in English. Mm. Well, I see only the same English ones I just gave you. <clears throat> yeah, I cannot find anything except this. So anyway, uh, you know, the explanation is coming somehow from from this book, the book of Enoch, where there is a gate, and where everything blow from this gate: the cold, the snow, the uh, uh, the hail. And if you go in the Quran, you will find it says the same: that hail come from mountains in heaven. Allah He break from mountains in heaven. Hail.
Wait a see. Here the translation to try to make it like you know look like there's a, he sent down from sky hail like mountains doesn't say like it says from mountains not like mountains from mountains where is mountains in heaven this is what it says in the book of Enoch now for sure that will appear again in a different place you know the story about hail you know like not only in this page. You can go to page number 46. Uh, so simply, it's a, it's about a journey to heaven and what he saw. And Muhammad, obviously, he took what he saw, or what the book here is saying, he took it into account and he started writing and making stories about it. The same story of Muhammad himself going to heaven, you know. There are, there are kept the treasure of hail and the, for, the frost and the treasure of snow and the treasure of rain and of the, and the dew. You see it? But where is that? That is in heaven. You know? And then you will see here. Thus in the heaven take place the blowing of the wind all of them have a breathing and uh, effect complete completion breathing there you know I mean it's it's, uh, it's the same you can tell the connection right you can see right away how Muhammad he got all this information from and you know if you continue reading the whole book and comparing and other books too then you will be able to put the dots together On the screen? I'm oh, sorry, my fault. Oh boy. I apologize. Okay, hold on. All right, we go back to the book. <laughs> All right, so I was showing you nothing. All right, if we go here. All right, look what it says. <clears throat> uh, Thus in the heaven take place uh, the blowing of the winds. All of them have a breathing and effect complete uh, combination of a breathing. There are the treasures of thunder are kept and the splendor of lighting. And then he continued here. There are kept the snow, uh, the, kept the treasure of hail and the frost and the treasure of snow and the treasure of rain and dough or dew uh, you go here it says exactly the same <clears throat> the only difference is the translation is false to make it look different it says it clearly he sent down from mountains in heaven there's mountains and then if you go i mean the more you compare the more you see how much he is copying right uh, look here what it says like you can go to page number 46 You see what uh, what what you know what what he what he saw in the journey to heaven. So this is always in a journey into the heaven. Um, and then you go here. You will find the same. <clears throat> and then you go here. And then you go here. It's all over. You know? And this is all in the third gate.
it's interesting right to read those books I mean because here you can see uh, a lot of connection and where those stories are coming from and how Muhammad he believed in them obviously and this is not by the way I don't believe Muhammad is the one who is making those stories I don't think even Muhammad he knew about them uh, if you remember uh, we spoke many time about Waraq al Nufal. You remember Waraq al Nufal? When Waraq al Nufal he died, Muhammad he tried to commit suicide. You remember? I believe all those stories are coming from Waraq al Nufal, and Muhammad did not know anything about them. That's why when they ask him questions, he don't know what to say. <coughs> You know what I mean? Oh, it says my battery, my mouse battery is dying. So I better I better finish before I lose connection of my computer and then I will stay live forever. <laughs> my battery connection is dying. I get message now from my uh, in the screen. So I better go guys. Sorry. Mouse battery very low. I apologize. All right, we will continue tomorrow. All right, I apologize. If I don't click now end, I will lose my uh, my ability to click end, and then it will stay live, and I am not here. All right, guys, uh, we continue tomorrow. You know, we start with a new topic, maybe, or we continue. We will see. Uh, I'm, I don't know. I can keep this video, but I don't know if it's if there is it's long. You see, I try to make them short, but what I can do. I don't know what to do. I need to control how long I stay so people can download it easy. This is a two hours and 48 minutes. I mean, how in the world people, they can work with this video. I have to delete it now. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you very much. Anyway, I'm losing my voice. It's getting cold here and uh, my heater is off to avoid the noise. Thank you and um, I hope Tomorrow the Lord will give us a chance to talk to you again and we will be able to teach you more. Uh, thank you very much. May the Lord bless you and see you soon again. Take care. Bye-bye.